Hello, Sydney. How we doing? Sick hats. All right. Cool. Good day. This week, the chattering classes of this once great nation have been all of a flutter. Is it about the ongoing crisis of hoons terrorizing our suburbs? <laughs> Alas, struth, no. <laughs> they are cracking the shits about nothing more than the planned Saudi Arabian city of Neom. <laughs> yes, the cab sav communists of Dover Heights <laughs> have gone crook about Mohammed bin Salman's plans to build a 170 kilometer long city in a perfectly straight line in the middle of the desert, <laughs> citing concerns about the supposedly inhumane treatment of local nomadic tribes who have been forcibly moved away from the area to permit construction. But surely the Jasmine T. Jacobins of Newtown <laughs> must admit that moving on nomadic people from one place to another is actually supporting their cultural traditions. <laughs> Would it not in fact be more racist <laughs> to allow them to stay in one place? Their silence speaks volumes. Indeed, should they not be thrilled that the person of color, Mohammed bin Salman, <laughs> is building an entire city, the first one to be so impossibly long and unthinkably narrow? breaking the traditional colonialist city paradigm. <laughs> and yet, these drongos are spitting the dummy nevertheless. The aloe vera asadists of Marrickville <laughs> say it's ridiculous to build a city in a straight line. They say a city so long and narrow would be logistically impossible to maintain. But perhaps it is their minds that are narrow. So brainwashed are they by woke LGBT propaganda that they can't even permit a city to be straight. <laughs> In my view, these moisturizer Maoists should take a leaf out of the book of Australia's greatest statesman, Bob Catter. <laughs> and admit that Mr. Bin Salman is entitled to his urban planning proclivities. <laughs> and rather than wasting any more time on it, if they would only give MBS a fair suck, I, re <laughs> I reckon the line could be some real ripper shit. But alas, dear reader, as the human rights complaints pile in and the objections to Neom grow, the line grows ever shorter. And I fear it may have to become as short as 1,984 meters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Trash Future! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, the Great Club in Sydney, are we well? Thank you very much for coming out on, I'll be perfectly honest, I haven't caught up, I don't know what day it is. It's a Thursday, and it's the day we're here. Um, uh, we are very, very pleased uh, to be here in, in Australia. We're very, very pleased as well uh, for myself, Riley, Milo, and Hussein, and Nate to be joined by Tom and Demi. Um, we regret that Alice was not able to be, has she left a message? She has left me a message. Uh, Alice wants everyone to know. She's sorry she's not here. She went to get the train to the venue and saw a filthy, noisy, broken diesel engine announcing it was going to be 72 hours late and fell into a combination of autism and homesickness so powerful as to totally incapacitate her. <laughs> um, no, we are... Um, I, I, I can tell you, I've actually been looking forward to this more than any other individual Australian live show because... I've been planning this one for quite a while. As you might have been able to tell from what Milo talked about, a lot of stuff has been going on vis-a-vis -vis Neom for a while. <laughs> and I have, like, um, uh, like, like Mike Cernovich might teach you, held it in. <laughs> I have held in my essence. 
so I could just let it all the neon out. <laughs> Building um, a straight line is the gorilla mindset. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I have a whole wonderful neon segment planned uh, for today of everything that happened in neon. However, the other thing is, since we arrived in Australia, an entirely new segment has been born, which I've only taken to, I've taken to calling Australian excellence. <laughs> <laughs> because dear dear denizens of sydney i've been reading your local news <laughs> i have been reading your letters to the editor <laughs> i have suffused myself in the latter half the bottom bit of so many murdoch newspapers <laughs> that i can now share with my beloved friends and you, the title of the article that will be today's Australian Excellence. Demi can see it already and she's delighted. Oh, cunt on a plane goes nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, ahem. The article is, this is from Nine News. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, a little local. Hey, a little bit of that nine news. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a German newspaper for people who hate the news. <laughs> <laughs> no more of the news! I told you last week, nine! Ahem. The headline is as follows Gender Reveal Hoon Nabbed by Police. <laughs> yes! <laughs> For what crime? None it is the... now a crime to reveal the gender? <laughs> <laughs> None of these words are in the Talmud. <laughs> 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 Char charged with more than 260 individual offenses. Yeah. Holy shit. Each one of them more Australian than the last. <laughs> uh, I think so. Since, I, since we came, uh, the, the first Australian excellence segment was um, all about a guy who went for a test drive in a car and stole it. And when questioned by police said, I plan to steal it as soon as I saw it was available. <laughs> the second one was about introducing the concept of hooning to me. Uh, and now they're all going to be about hooning. <laughs> so, this is what it says in Nine News. Victoria police have arrested a man and charged him with 260 offenses. <laughs> police allege the 22-year-old was involved in not one, but two separate hoon gender reveals. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Now that is either it's there's two children or we had okay we got it wrong the first time. <laughs> or, is it a crime to have twins? <laughs> <laughs> or alternatively, uh, it's that the gender was hoon. <laughs> Mm. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but this this sort of implies that the hoon is involved in the gender reveal, but was the hoon like trying to disrupt the gender reveal? Uh, the hoon was doing the gender reveal. Uh, he filled his tires with pink and blue dust. <laughs> uh, I like, you're you're I, not I, ready for they them hoon. <laughs> 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 Wait, but also, also based on my knowledge of the hoon, like because they just like like to you know mesh it up and. So if they had pink and blue, so wouldn't it mix? I'm, I'm really confused. Pink about, like, or blue, whether or not. Yeah, it's but what if it mixes? Bisexual together, like, lighting. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, I mean, whatever gender your kid's going to be, it will be bisexual. In the <laughs> sense that hooning is about driving badly, as I understand it. Yeah. Hoon, <laughs> hoons are spiritually bisexual. That is. <laughs> well, that's my understanding of the spectrum. So, so <laughs> Sergeant, Sergeant Paul Holtzinger from Dandenong High Risk Driving Police Unit <laughs> had, the, had the following to say. If you're celebrating an impending birth and want to reveal the gender of your child, can't you pop a balloon or cut a cake? <laughs> yeah, we could probably drive a car into a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> Putting my car into a cake. Yeah. <laughs> Putting my gender reveal cake up the top of Mount Glorious. <laughs> Handbrake turn around the top, just fucking nailing the straight. H holding you, destroying a fucking tiered cake. Just like strap a knife to the side of it and just drift past the cake. That's the the, the thing about hooning, in my experience, is it's. Can you tell me the thing about hooning? <laughs> the th oh, we need to talk about hooning. The thing about it is, it's it's it seems unique because it's a subculture of like car guy who drives like he hates his car. 
He will spend a, like hundreds of thousands of dollars on the car and then intentionally pop the tires doing a burnout on the specific kind of asphalt that the police installed so that people would stop doing burnouts. <laughs> It's so Become fucking Become ungovernable. Yeah. <laughs> I ge- genuinely, like, ever since I learned that this was a thing, I can't stop thinking about her talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it is not only bizarre and illegal behavior, said Holtzinger, but has the real ability to turn a moment of celebration into tragedy. Bizarre and illegal behavior is a mixtape name. <laughs> so... The funny thing is that the same guy, the reason he was charged with more than 260 offenses related to hooning, um, was that he also, (laughs) sorry, he also has been involved in a small time vehicle theft parts ring. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's a good moon if your gender gets revealed with a stolen carburetor. (laughs) Father's profession, businessman. (laughs) Homme d'affaires, as they say in France. <laughs> uh, so this is... So basically, he's done a couple of gender reveal hoonings. Only one was for his kid. <laughs> he did another one as a favor. Was the... Oh, okay. I was going to ask, was the other one, like, requested? Or is he just out there being no, like, just, it's a boy? Kev, I saw that hoon you did. My <laughs> wife wants the same. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about the way the smoke poured out the tyres. It's beautiful. My car's got traction control. It'll never work. (laughs) Coming, begging, hat in hand, please. I've got a front-wheel drive. (laughs) That's all we can afford. (laughs) It's a Kia Rio. (laughs) My child cannot be revealed in a Kia Rio. (laughs) I'm begging you. I'm more, uh, I'm more interested in the idea that you can do a bur- sick burnout badass enough that it can make the gender of the baby whatever the parents want it to be. <laughs> it's just like, if he pops both tires at once and you know for a fact it's going to be whatever you want. Yeah, you know what it is? It's a, it's a character creation screen. The more, the more sick your burnout, the more sliders you get. A, a, a hoon in the second trimester that tests for birth defects. <laughs> All right, we got red smoke. That looks like it's going to have Crohn's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All the right. cops just lowering their hats like that baby's going to be shitting and farting. <laughs> so, look, that's a little bit of Australian excellence for you all today. But, <laughs> but, but, look, before we get into Neom. I have a very quick startup. Just a, just a soupçon of startup. Before a long and thin segment, we have a short and wide segment. <laughs> it's called Volocopter. And <laughs> from my left, Demi, yeah. Volocopter, what do you think that is? I don't want to be involved. <laughs> Milo. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, a, a helicopter for little, little aquatic rodents. Tom, Volocopter. Man, this sucks, but I think it's like a bike you can hit stuff with. Like a bike that would like an aspiring a... hoon who doesn't have the money. <laughs> yeah. Someone who can finally I'm with the power of the, so the power of your own legs, you can fucking just plow rodents off the road and you'll never even realize. Mm. Like a snow plow. <laughs> Gender reveal helicopter? That's <laughs> all I've got, man. So it's, 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 it's fairly like normal startup name. Oh, a spinning rat. <laughs> if only. No. If only. Oh, you never played Spin the Rat? <laughs> Gender reveal helicopter is so sick, though. Just taking off, hovering one foot above the ground, and then just chucking some powder, like a bag of powder, <laughs> into the blades. Awesome. <laughs> oh, no, that was our ideas, cocaine. <laughs> Nate, Volocopter. Uh, it's a helicopter, but you can only use it for some kind of NGO work, like for volunteering. Nate's closest. Ooh. That sucks. Oh, yeah, that sucks really me. bad. <laughs> now, uh, let's just say this. It's considered to be, and again, because I am who I am, I've read um, uh, various kinds of prospectuses of investment and so on. It's considered to be ESG, which is very funny. Um, mm. Two seats... 18 rotors and endless possibilities, they say. The Volo City Volocopter Air Taxi 
is a technologically superior all electric air all electric aircraft with the ability to vertically take off and land. Huh. <laughs> right. I'm more interested in, in their they have to differentiate from the other helicopters that don't vertically take off and land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my helicopter takes off downward. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Isn't that just like a drill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We put my helicopter together real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the rotors pushed. <laughs> <laughs> and it also makes you taller. Uh, just like self-driving cars, and this is where it gets terrible, fully oh. autonomous aircraft. Oh. Hope you didn't like being alive. It's, it goes back to the thing that like helicopters are the best mode of transport because they kill the most rich people. <laughs> so true. Mm. <laughs> that is true. They are. Yeah, they're more expensive than a guillotine. Yeah. And they're, they're pretty much single use unless you like, I don't know, get one of them to like, like yeah. <laughs> unless you're getting them to do like a line out lift into yeah. the blades. Like, hey, all the ideas cocaine went there. What? <laughs> 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 Just like self-driving cars, fully autonomous aircraft are, and this is a word doing quite a bit of heavy lifting in this sentence, expected to launch commercially. <laughs> Oh, we're expecting them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any day now. No, don't worry. Our dumbest people believe this to be possible. <laughs> no, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm curious, though, because you said two-seater. So does this imply that the concept here is that you as a person, and perhaps with a plus one, are going to sit in a helicopter that is fully autonomous, and it's just going to fly wherever it feels like flying you, and you're yep. just going to be like, yeah, I trust this. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. Nate? Yes. <laughs> It is incredible to create a form of transport that makes me trust the hot air balloon. <laughs> so it's like they saw those videos of the autonomous drone delivery in Russia where it just crashed straight into a building over and over again. There's like, God, I wish that was me. Yeah. Fuck. I wish I was that shashlik. Uh, compared to ground vehicles, autonomous aircraft will initially navigate through uncongested skies. Initially. Before plummeting to the earth. <laughs> And will not need to account for pedestrians, cyclists, or other road users. Again, Until they plummet to the <laughs> earth. <laughs> Instead, they will share the airspace with other highly automated aircraft uh, communicating safely with uh, one another. <laughs> Until, of course... <laughs> communicating safely most of the time with one another, mostly. Mostly. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna... Mostly is a great a, word. I'm going to create a bike catapult to congest the skies. <laughs> er yeah, me and the guys have been watching the film E.T. <laughs> We've had a business idea. <laughs> E.T. just getting minced. <laughs> <laughs> We've, done it. We've done a lot of gender cocaine and we're... <laughs> We're pretty confident. We have, as a result of our invention, we have flown E.T. through a fine blade, finger first. <laughs> That's right. And essentially misted the little cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in a five kilometer radius is going to be breathing E.T. for a month. Mm. Urban air mobility needs to be tailored to the challenges of flying within a city. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't at all. <laughs> we looked at the sky and we thought, what if this was worse? <laughs> Tall buildings, narrow ro roads, moving obstacles. Yes, moving obstacles. Seems like flying thousands of helicopters through a city isn't a good idea. And while our highly trained pilots will be more than capable of navigating this environment, we will be deploying smart, redundant assistance systems to ensure maximum safety from day one. Now, why... Sorry, go ahead, Demi. No, I... Sorry. I, I thought it was... You go on. <laughs> Are you... Is there a problem... Leave me here! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, Demi. I think I know what you're saying. You're saying it's autonomous. So they're saying, for now, there's pilots. Exactly. Autonomy is coming any day. <laughs> Just but now there's pilots, but don't worry, eventually it will kill you. <laughs> what we want is to streamline this so we don't need a guy behind the wheel to hit you with a car. <laughs> or a drone. I think I would respect them a little bit more if they didn't have the caveat about, we'll start with pilots. Just like, no, get in. Oh. Fucking get in. Are you ready to be training data? <laughs> <laughs> now, some of you might be asking... Why would I choose to talk about a pretty bog-standard autonomous uh, helicopter urban air taxi startup when we've talked about that before? 
I'm going to read you another sentence now. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that such a good sign when I say that? <laughs> Upcoming Giga Project in Saudi Arabia, Neom, has announced... Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciated the hooting. Thank you. Neom, <laughs> neom. We're really big in the owl market. <laughs> Upcoming giga project in Saudi Arabia, Neom, has announced it is spending 175 million American dollars of investment in urban air mobility provider Volocopter. Yes. Oh. 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 You think our company is stupid? Well, we've just sold it to Neom. You're going to be laughing on the other side of your face when it's in the 170 kilometer long city in the middle of the desert. <laughs> in December last year, Neom and Volocopter agreed to a joint venture whereby Volocopter... Again, this is why I, 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 I say this to people. They, how do you find funny stuff in financial statements? This is how, bitch. In December <laughs> last year, Neom and Volocopter agreed to a joint venture whereby Volocopter will operate electric taxi services in Neom to connect regions including the Line, Oxagon, and Trojina. So it's, it's intra-city rail, but you mostly die. <laughs> But I also imagine that, like, they had to capture the Saudis' attention for this, and it just, it's, it's the country that did 9-11, and someone's just banging on Mohammed bin Salman's door, like, Sir, sir, you need to see this. Look, this is really important. Look, you next know time that new sound you've been looking for? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh. actually, he was levitating above the helicopter blades. That's oh. right. Oh, sorry, Riley, you've been reading this wrong. This is Yolo Copter. <laughs> um... The CEO of Volocopter, Dirk Hoke, added... <laughs> Come on! Yes! yes! The fucking Dutch! <laughs> you knew it! I knew it! The... The cheese sandwich blackface brigade were behind this! <laughs> Only people who would rightfully have been swallowed by the seas long ago would invent such an item. <laughs> the cunts named after Batman punching two men. <laughs> um, Biff Pow, CEO of Volocopter, added, This is the first time in history that VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing electric vehicles, are being factored into the design of a region that's being built from scratch. I wonder why it's the first mm. time in history that that's happening. This offers a whole new approach to urban air mobility that can, and this is a very questionable ending to this sentence, increase the quality of life in cities. It will certainly decrease the time of life in cities. <laughs> Which, if you're living in Neom, yeah. might be a good thing. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> getting squashed by a drone on my way to drive one of the many poop <laughs> trucks. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I could have filled one of those last week. Oh, boy. <laughs> Milo has well, been, people. <laughs> Milo has been very sick. He's contracted a kind of shitting disease. Yeah, I'm fine now, but I, I, I contracted the shitting disease on Friday morning, and we had to fly to Australia on Friday evening. So I had what I think might be the worst 25 hours available to a human being. Now, for you, <laughs> <laughs> you swine. <laughs> Especially those of you in the front row. That's Feel right. worse about it. So, can I just please have everybody uh, give me a cheer if you know about Neom? We, we got some lion heads in. We got some, we got some Euclid fans in the house. So, um, look. <laughs> Sounded like some of you, that was your first time cheering. It is. <laughs> and I don't want to be mean. Finally, it's for me. <laughs> but several of you just went. <laughs> I've never heard that before. It is, Demi, I've been thinking of this the whole time because we live here and this is the, it is so intoxicating being at a live show where the people who like your podcast finally feel this is the one show they can go and not be bullied at. <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> Don't worry, no one's going to ask any of you what you do. Um, so, um, we know it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or IT. Look, so, Tom, uh, as a giant neon head, yeah. 
can you give for anyone who's like been confused by all this talk of like Neom and the line and stuff, I imagine the five percent of you that didn't do the reading I assigned on Twitter. Um, can you give like a one minute precy of what the fuck Neom is? It's it's an idea bad enough that I, a dipshit, can enjoy looking at it and being like, well, that's no good. <laughs> It's what you would make with one minute as an eight-year-old in SimCity, and then you'd understand why it fails. <laughs> it's a city that's built in a straight line. Uh, and for what reason? Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> no one's ever done it before. And why? Well, we're going to find out. And we're oh, all so going quickly. to hell. <laughs> It's a whole city that's built on the premise. What if we did what Event Horizon does to the ship? <laughs> to, to urban planning. It's also the sound that a small, fast car might make. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's right. Maybe, well, you, maybe if there was some kind of mouse hoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some kind of a Stuart Little hoon. Yeah. yeah. Just going, get fucked. <laughs> Oh, that mouse just called me a cunt. Meow. <laughs> 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 so from Sim City to Slim City. <laughs> so as, as Tom described, it's an insane idea. Um, it was conceived by uh, the uh, mad family kidnapper in charge of Saudi Arabia, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Mohammed this bin Salman. This is Salman. a family kidnapping yeah. business. Uh, to be his, quote, pyramids, or as I would suggest, to be his statue of himself in the trackless wastes. Um, it is a province that Reading includes... Reading the start of the poem and being like, large and trunkless legs of stone, pretty good so far. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't skip leg day. <laughs> Sorry, I read this poem about some awesome legs the other day. <laughs> I'm really looking Guy forward to finishing legs. it. <laughs> So what I'm going to do They is should call it the big legs. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay a bunch of Western consultants, designers, and architects hundreds of millions of dollars just to do me renderings of what it could look like. Also, I'm going to commit a bunch of human rights abuses while doing so. Um, and that's just Saudi culture. I mean, you can't, you can't stop them doing that. So, so basically, uh, for, for, those, so for those of you who don't know, that's what it is. Province supposed to be like the future of everything and they're deciding mm -hmm. to do it through urban planning by paying like guys from McKinsey and then guys from um, like uh, uh, like uh, Zaha Hadid or whatever just in infinite money to just do renderings and say what if there was a second moon in a beach made of marble both real things that are supposed to be in neon <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, I love, a, I love a marble beach in, like, 50 degrees. It was designed by a company that only does yachts. They've never designed a beach or a town. I they just do yachts. I love, to, I love to step onto the marble beach and my feet immediately sear and glue to it as though it's a hibachi plate. <laughs> so uh, the other thing to think, remember about the line is that, it, yes, it's a city that's in a straight line. Mm. Um, it's supposed to have 9 million people in it um, and there's no cars but everything's in a bit of 5 minute rocking radius from where you live um, and if you need to get to another area there's a high speed train that stops every 5 minute walk so cool great yeah. will definitely work it's a Money, train please. that's doing hooning yeah. it's, it's flooring it between the lights So um, I don't want to have to conga everywhere with my neighbours <laughs> So, oh, it's a British tradition. So I see. There's, there's the line, but there's another couple of things. There's Oxagon, which is an octagonal city that's like half built underwater for some reason. <laughs> um, and it's supposed to be an advanced manufacturing hub. And then there's a year-round ski resort called Trojina, uh, which has a folded village and uh, impossible geometry. <laughs> it's so many Bioshocks. Like... <laughs> It's too many of them. <laughs> a, so, a lot of this has impossible geometry. I love the idea of, like, America has the Pentagon. We almost got rid of it, but we failed. Um, with the <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do one better. <laughs> they were just trying to turn it into the square. That's right. <laughs> like, they did for Saudi HQ. They were like, too many corners. <laughs> <laughs> Little did they know, they only created more. Mm. Um, so they were only trying to behead the World Trade Center. 
<laughs> so, the province... <laughs> oh, come on. No, that's too far, Milo. You know what you bought tickets for. <laughs> Don't <laughs> make yourselves feel better about what you did by groaning. <laughs> <laughs> they just... <laughs> Imagining the guy in one plane being like, he's he's heard of the Twin Towers, but he's only ever seen the film Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. <laughs> he's like, one of them needs to be shorter. <laughs> Is it, it was a gender reveal for the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> so look. Yeah, there are two uh, genders. A Arnold Saudi Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, the third gender is Tower 7. Look it up. <laughs> Controlled demolition. Uh, so look, the province is going to has now been announced that it's going to host the 2029. Uh, oh, so you have a speech. <laughs> <laughs> the, Go ahead. the province has announced it will host the 2029 Asian Winter Games. To which I say, really? <laughs> will it? Oh, it's not often winter there. <laughs> but also, I have some very exciting nudes for all, nudes. <laughs> very, yeah! That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Now come on, after the show. I fucking show. bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> I've been working out a lot. Come see me later. Um, it is ass day today. <laughs> that I actually, for Boney Island Whitefish fans, today actually, today actually was ass day. Yeah. Uh, for me. No. So construction has actually started on the line. Woo! Wow. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, they actually have started. Like they've started like pretending like they're gonna keep doing it. Like they're they're basically a bunch of like um like backhoes and diggers, uh, on a 160 kilometer radius digging out a bunch of foundations. Being like, are we gonna have to just pretend to do the whole thing? Like when are they gonna decide that this isn't gonna happen? Guys, guys love digging holes. I I really support them. Like, yeah, they're getting paid so much money to just dig holes. Or they're not. Or they're just like not being paid anything to dig holes. But. <laughs> Making I mean, a whole rules. <laughs> I mean, it it really does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, this is it. I'm going to hire a cyclops to snort up the line when it's done. <laughs> Finally, would, it's racked up. This would be, it really is building the perfect 2D side scrolling city. <laughs> Damn, Godzilla would have. The, map. He, he would have the easiest time <laughs> rampaging oh, yeah. down that thing. So. It'd be really easy to do a police. A it, it'd be really easy to do a police chase in neon. That's like a side <laughs> point, but like, yeah. Just, oh, well, you have really to hard. build the yeah. perfect street racing city, and you can resurrect Paul Walker. <laughs> so hologram he'll only Paul come back Walker if the conditions are correct. So, uh, <laughs> well, he was killed by Benz, so you know. But in, the line wait, could have saved him. Wait, but in like in the last Fast and Furious, it, doesn't it imply that Paul Walker is still alive? In the last one, I, I can't remember what it was like. I saw Actually, it on the plane. Yeah, there's a, there's I'm a, fucking telling you. They take there's a there's a shot of a fork in the road, and Vin Diesel <laughs> goes one way, Paul Walker goes the other, and then his car explodes into flame. Yeah. So, so but they go into racket. space at some point. But yeah. Anyway, like anyone who knows more about this, please tell me. Like, yeah. Anyone who studied the now. scripture. Um, so, so <laughs> please send us an email. I have so much neom here. Um, so basically. They're digging what is supposed to be the services spine, which is like <laughs> the layer of the city. I'm sorry, what a, what a piece of terminology there. <laughs> All of the robots just magically make everything work. Okay. Um, they haven't developed the robots yet, but they are digging. We got some Irish people down there, like the Titanic. <laughs> so, and, and also they're beginning to answer some of the thorny questions posed by having a 160 kilometer long city that I'm sorry we forgot to say, consists of two gigantic mirrored glass skyscrapers about uh, 100 meters distant from one another well, that go for 160 wait, hang kilometers. Wait, well, But I presume there isn't going to be any intense sun in the Saudi Arabian desert. <laughs> um, so, for those of you, I mean, because given that we're in Australia, you may not know this, but they, they built a skyscraper in London not so long ago called oh. the Walkie Talkie, which is a kind of skyscraper shaped a bit like this. And what they discovered up to their dismay after they built it was that it focused the sun's rays. <laughs> Onto a particular spot in the street in the financial district of London, and it just melted a bunch of Aston Martins. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> no. and they had to just coat the entire building to prevent this from happening. It's the best. Oh, it's yeah. so no. good. Who could just have predicted? moving there to feel like an ant. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Just, number... just coming back to your car and being like, oh, it's goo. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like that before? You, I you have 30 minutes to move your goo. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Some of you may be wondering, wait a minute, wouldn't two gigantic 160-kilometer-long uh, skyscrapers impact uh, migratory patterns for birds? Um, you might say maybe. However... <laughs> How would the swooping bird swoop? <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> we've added the volocopters to turn them into <laughs> a fine red mist. <laughs> well, you know what's worse is actually the swooping bird has got you in a kill zone. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to run. <laughs> you can't outrun a magpie. <laughs> so they, they have, and this gives me the feeling of like... Um, when you show up to a presentation, forget your notes and just kind of improvise and figure you'll do it later, they said, oh, we've worked out the exact migration paths for all birds in Saudi Arabia and have just designed Neom to have dips and holes where they are. <laughs> they saw, they saw like the whole like birds is fake, like birds are fake thing and they were like, yeah, that seems legit. Yeah. Mm. And if there's one thing I know about birds is that they aren't going to fly into windows. They're not going to be, they're going to be tricked by a mirrored surface. <laughs> not any bird, mm -hmm. especially on, these things are going to fucking like Swiss cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the skyscrapers. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to essentially be like you're subjected to an artillery barrage of like albatrosses. <laughs> <laughs> So, a new, a relatively new Bloomberg article. What I've been in your penthouse apartment. You're like trying to seduce some chick you brought back then. Just like constant thudding. She's like, "What? <laughs> what is that?" And you're just like, "Oh, it's another endangered species." Uh, bringing, they'll all be dead soon. Don't well, worry. Bringing home my second most gorgeous mistress and coming out from the shower to see that she's been impaled by a pelican. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's a newish. Your third most attractive mistress climbs out of the beak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where God closes the door, he opens a beak. <laughs> um, a relatively new tell all article in Bloomberg is revealing a lot of the inside story of the foreign consultants' progress made and so on. Where we find out also that that mountain, like year round ski resort, Trojina, construction started in it, then rapidly ended when their designs were found to be physically impossible. <laughs> Um, creating Trojina will, will require, and I quote, the removal of more than 20 million tons of rock. Great. Three times the weight of the Hoover Dam to build a ski resort in Saudi Arabia. I'm really fixated on the name Trojina. It sounds like the drag act in a panto that's really racist. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a, a panto where just like a third of it is just beeps. <laughs> The resort plans for the building of an artificial lake, which would require blowing up m large portions of the landscape. An adjacent hotel and residential development would require a man-made canyon, which would essentially be experienced as, quote, living in an open pit mine. Yeah. A, a manion. <laughs> Des despite all this, uh, when they got like right of reply from the Neon people, um, their chief executive officer, uh, Nadmi Al Nasser, said... Trojina will have a suitable infrastructure to create the winter atmosphere in the heart of the desert and make the winter games an unprecedented global event, to which I say it will certainly be unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, and also uh, outside the line at Oxagon, uh, where they're like, we're inventing a new kind of factory. It has to be mostly on water for some reason. Uh, they've said, a vast industrial zone built partly on pontoon structures floating in the Red Sea. Uh, they are now finishing a hydrogen plant uh, which shouldn't uh, rock back and forth too much, but also is on the water. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's a sea pod. <laughs> so um, this is working as a foreign consultant in Neom. What we thought was true, uh, which is uh, their senior consultants are being ox offered tax-free salaries of up to a million dollars a year for ideas that they know will never see the light of day. One former manager said... It's like working for the British government. <laughs> if I had to put a bottom line for all the work I did in that era, it was just presentations and PowerPoints that all went into the garbage the following week. It was the least productive part of my whole life in terms of... I mean, we know who the consultants are in the audience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was the least productive of my whole life. I mean, it would be a pretty sick job if it weren't for the bird rain happening on a constant basis. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a neon style catalog viewed by Bloomberg includes elevators that somehow fly through the sky. <laughs> Wait, yes. sorry. Did they hire Roll Doll for this? <laughs> All of it. We're going to oh. get to the influence of fiction on neon. Oh, great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Can't wait. Oh, God. An, 
an urban spaceport. <laughs> Mm. It's, I mean, it's a fucking guy who's conflated city building with world building. And he's hired a bunch of cunts whose D&D groups fell apart. And they're all like, well, there's a city in the desert. <laughs> and, oh, fuck me. Also, like, an urban... Like, SpaceX itself has dramatically contributed to a worsening of the air quality in West Texas because it launches so many rockets, which just create particulate matter. What if it was 50 meters from your house? Mm. You're like, ah, I can feel the years dropping off my life. Wait, so you're saying that the particulate matter I need is only like a five minute walk away? (laughs) Ooh, walkability. Awesome. (laughs) However, the project, and I don't want to shock you, According to Bloomberg, the project has been plagued by setbacks. Oh, not plagued. Oh, never would have thought this. I didn't say that. But, and the worst part is that's only the first of ten plagues. <laughs> first come the setbacks. Wait till I, they get to the albatrosses. I, 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 I love that the article is like, we reviewed 27,000 internal documents and spoke with 100 employees to find that the project was plagued by setbacks. Like... I could have told you that. <laughs> Just <laughs> We had to verify. Many, stemming from the difficulty of implementing Mohammed bin Salman's grandiose but also constantly changing ideas. Yeah, I so I actually have like someone someone who I like have an online connection with was like I got approached to work on the line. I got like fucking a job offer. And apparently like a lot of people in their field have got job offers. And they talk to people who have taken up those jobs and were like, "Oh yeah, there are like inside jokes among people working on the line about how it's never going to happen." Everyone knows that it's never going to happen. The current gag that they're doing is like, "Oh yeah, like MBS's kid was playing with blocks and then knocks f- and then the blocks fell over and MBS was like, "Build me that." <laughs> like that's the point. Everybody knows it's not going to happen, but the amount of freedom that that gives you. But a- apart from him, it's like a goodbye Lenin situation where like, we have to make him be- we have to make the idiot boy king of Saudi Arabia yeah. believe that the line will happen. I mean, I feel like there's a simpler explanation. He's about the same age as me. So, you know, about 16 years old when Dale Earnhardt died in 2001 by failure to turn left. And it's, he just looked at this and oh, said... Oh, Mohammed bin Salman knows a bunch of guys who died in 2001. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Difficult year. Difficult guy, year. He, just saw, he, he saw this, this poor man <laughs> crash into a wall. He said, this will never happen again. So You mm-hmm. will drive straight forever. Oh, <laughs> so this is, MB, this is a story about how uh, MBS decided the style preferences for the Gulf of Aqaba Resort, which has the marble beach. You know, right. the resort that was designed yeah, by a company. Yeah, <laughs> the You know, the resort that was designed by a company that builds yachts and has never built anything but yachts. They were like, how do I you guess- have marble on a yacht? It's so heavy. They were <laughs> like, I guess we'll try building a resort town. Now, in their defense, you know, it's not that there's that many companies that build beaches. So it's not like mm. when, the, when anyone you can ask to do it is a stupid idea. Asking the yacht people is only a stupid idea. Uh, but I mean, it is kind of amazing to imagine you're at the top of your game in some kind of like heavy duty architectural construction field and then someone's like can you build me a beach of marble and it's like I didn't realize we're being consulted by the sphinx but <laughs> so but the, the sphinx pro- who kills you the project's <laughs> the other thing the MBS is working on is something that walks on four legs in the morning <laughs> <laughs> the project scope includes developing a series of hotels According to the report, the gas station hotel includes uh-huh. two 500 meter tall towers on either side of the main highway. Um, and MBS told its designers that he liked the aesthetic of cyberpunk. Yes, bro. Cyberpunk stinger, please. Yeah. So, uh, this is from the article quote I was a little surprised to hear that the prince was very interested in science fiction. Again, have you not seen your own brief? But many people are, of course, of all sorts of political persuasions. Um, so this team basically... That, that's the fucking Bob Catter response. Of that, you know, <laughs> people are entitled to their literary proclivities. <laughs> so what happened was this team then started working sort of 20-hour days researching the aesthetics and implied political, implication, implied political culture of cyberpunk's many iterations. 
which basically led Neom to have an official taxonomy of science fiction atmospheres. Awesome. Great. And to, they, then they realized that, okay, MBS has said that he likes cyberpunk, but he clearly doesn't understand that cyberpunk implies a very dystopian future. <laughs> so we need to somehow make him think that that's what we're doing while doing a different thing. I do, I do love the idea of this, like of him being so fixated on like the backstories and like uh, fictional histories of this place that doesn't exist. It's like, it's very like Reddit. Um, this is like very much a guy who spends so much time on comment sections that he sort of like imagined a world and he kind of thinks that it's real where everyone sort of around him is like, we can't build this building. He's like, no, this building needs a backstory. It needs a gender. It needs, <laughs> and, it needs to, and it needs to be coherent. It needs to be on AO3. It's great. It's like the world's, the world's foremost BB-8 expert can have you dismembered at a moment's notice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the team ultimately settled on two guiding philosophies for the resort. Solar punk, depicting a future where environmental challenges have largely been solved. He saw the cartoon, oh. didn't he? No, the cartoon. He saw the yogurt commercial. He saw the yogurt commercial <laughs> that, got, that got everyone mad, but like, oh, this thing would work in real life. And he was like, I'll show you, you fucking comment. You fucking like <laughs> YouTube comment dickhead. He, made, he was like, I would like this yogurt commercial rendered into a beach town. <laughs> He saw, like, he saw, like, British leftists get mad, but, oh, yeah, this couldn't be real life. He's like, I'll fucking show you. <laughs> Mohammed bin Salman dreams of a little French girl helping him get his marbles back from the bullies. So, it's so fucking Just good. in the UK, that ad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't. <laughs> that was very strange what you when just said, Hussain Milo. When only laughed, I was like, oh, I see. Oh, I've, seen, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it. It's good. It was a good joke. Thank I you. It. Thank you. So that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Over in England, we have a little girl we look at. <laughs> so, Vic it's a little French girl, not a nonce. She just helps you get your marbles back. <laughs> <laughs> we all like to go. <laughs> so, I don't care for the French, but she's all right. So, so, if I may tell you, it transpired that the reason that MBS liked it is because it was quite similar uh, of an example of the style as Ryan Coogler's film Black Panther, which was the first movie shown when MBS allowed Saudi cinemas to reopen. <laughs> That's awesome. So awesome. everyone just kind of just improvised the first thing in front of them, and then it got buoyed by infinite money. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Didn't Black Panther come out ages before COVID? Yes. <laughs> Wait, so Saudi cinemas were reopening from, like, a different event. <laughs> from when he was like, right, no oh. more films. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, you fucked it. I think reopened... I think they reopened Ever. and then they played Black Panther as like, hey, great news, everybody. You can come see uh, a good version of the line in a... I don't know what... He's building his own Wakanda is great because the idea of these people being employed to imagine what if cyberpunk but the corporations are good <laughs> is so, really good. I now also move on from the science fiction element to this is a, a Western consultant who's like really into the line genuinely. Um, and, and what what she thinks living in the line would be like. Sorry, I turned my groan machine on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's you guys. I like, I, I, I like that all of a sudden we found that Demi is a 909. <laughs> Very important for acid techno. Um, so, uh, th thank you. Uh, I joined because in my working career, no one has ever asked me, do you fancy setting up a semi-autonomous state using your passion as a tool for positive social change? Yeah, but People are always asking me that. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no one's asking me about high question. They're just like, can you stop like microwaving fish? <laughs> can you create positive Sir, social change? curries. <laughs> <laughs> Can it's so awesome. <laughs> no, You're banned from PC World. Don't be coming in here with your Milo. trout again. Milo, it's Australia. Say Bunnings. <laughs> <laughs> Do they sell microwaves at Bunnings? I don't know. <laughs> Mi mixed murmuring from the crowd no, there. I, I, Inconclusive. No, I distinctly heard a lesbian over here say, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, the lesbians are I, the authority. I can't see you, but I know. <laughs> It no says, one's ever asking me if I wanted to create positive social change for the built environment in my job, but they do ask me, do you fucking hate birds? Do you want to <laughs> fucking end all birds? 
<laughs> being, have being, you been thrown out of PC World for trying to microwave a bird? <laughs> have you been swooped on by a bird? <laughs> <laughs> Getting swooped on by a bird is what they want these days. It's she, as simple as she that. She swoop on my bird till I magpie. Yeah. It's, it's. <laughs> Didn't deserve an applause break, you <laughs> fucking Philistines. No, encourage him more. Do it. No, it needed to be more scattered. We got at least <laughs> double the claps it deserved. Yeah. It's it's as simple as that, she says. Her eyes light up as she describes an ideal day in the Neom of the future, which I am very excited to share with you now. Yay. I mean, it's never going to be the Neom of the present, is it? <laughs> Imagine, she says, a sixth grader. When he, <laughs> yes, oh, I'm always this. saying this. Oh. Oh, I should, I should oh. clarify. That's I the guy clarify. who came up with this. She's British. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Ima- imagine a sixth grader. <laughs> she says. Continue you imagining a twelve-year-old. <laughs> imagine a sixth grader. When he wakes up, his home will scan his metabolism. Because he's had too much sugar the night before, mm. the refrigerator will dispense porridge instead of the granola bar he wanted. It's just sort of British fantasy. Like, imagine a child being served gruel. <laughs> Does it not please you? Had too many treats, have you, boy? <laughs> what well, you shall learn. The birds are dead now. <laughs> they cannot help you. <laughs> what if your house was a cruel mother? <laughs> Outside. Instead of a bus stop, he finds a swimming canal. (laughs) A swimming canal. He changes into a skimpy little number. (laughs) Control yourselves. I got in trouble again for showing up to school sopping wet. (laughs) Oh, I'm so moist I can't even sit on these chairs. I'm full of oats, sir. Imagine a room full of the slipperiest children. (laughs) Children so slippery, the schoolmaster can barely contain them. (laughs) Come here, you knavish waifs. (laughs) You must learn about grammar. But who could contain them when they're running around with slow-acting carbs to fuel them all day? (laughs) Ah, fueled with the scotch slop. (laughs) Outside, he'll find a swimming canal instead of a bus stop. Carrying a waterproof backpack, he'll breaststroke the whole way to school. (laughs) What? Is he waiting fucking 45 minutes after eating breakfast? He's gonna be boiled alive in that shit. Remember, he's also stroke. between. Don't forget, he's also between two giant mirrors. Yes, yes. The canal will be a fine, a fine stock of young boy <laughs> yeah, from really. from which a passing gentleman may drink at his pleasure. <laughs> Every British man over forty is provided with the longest straw. <laughs> A straw, which in Neom seems a normal length. (laughs) (laughs) Neom Neom confirms that this is the plan. They are considering an idea where they, instead of streets and footpaths, they will have canals filled with swimmable water. What? Creating creating an aquatic commuting option. (laughs) I mean, is this just a thing where, like, they realize that no one's actually reading these PowerPoints, so they're just throwing in the wildest... I'm like, reading them! But it's yeah. just it's like, <laughs> I bet you MBS will never notice that we've built boy canals. <laughs> just, someone's fucking Zora fanfic got merged into... <laughs> you're, not, you're not ready for they, them, banal. <laughs> Yes, open the boy sluice. <laughs> <laughs> All of them putting your Let child. Let the boys. <laughs> putting your child into a water tube and shooting him to school like a salmon. Cry, cry, have a and let slip the boys of school. <laughs> <laughs> it was when it was when I read this segment that I realized that the improv tendency has to be destroyed. <laughs> No one stopped yes ending here, and now they're talking about some kind of a boy tube. What if, <laughs> you know what's a better exercise than walking to school? Swimming to school. <laughs> and awesome. Okay. But here's it's the full thing. body, it's low impact. Yeah. 
Any it, house not containing a boy will be provided with the boy. <laughs> <laughs> if you have not been provided with the boy, pick up the boy of the soldier in front of you when he falls. <laughs> Some of you will be provided with boys, others with oats. One, in, one man gets the boy, one man gets the moistening liquid. This, this canal clogged with the bodies of dead children. If ever, you, you've seen the beginning of Enemy at the Gates, it's that, but for gutting to school. I'm, oh no, I walk to school in the canal, but I don't like to think about what I'm walking on. <laughs> Look... We, we've all, so we've all heard about this other stuff, these crazy plans. I also want to, it's uh, very exciting, I can, the official TF debut, uh, that Neom has also announced a new subsidiary company called Tautomous. Great. You oh, might be okay. wondering, what's Tautomous? <laughs> I'm always asking this. That's right. <laughs> so I've got some, a bunch of sentences. Is it uh, like to- are you sure it's like not a ton of mouse? Like the, mu- the mice <gasps> in the canal? Um, <gasps> I'm afraid... A ton of mouse were all with their little cars going yum. <laughs> it's all come full circle, or shall I say, full distance over the line. No, mm. don't worry. I'm going to say... I'm going to say some comparative sentences that are, I'm pretty sure are going to illustrate what Tonimus does. Okay. Smart is digital. Cognitive is digital humanism. <gasps> okay. Th- this MF spitting. Let's go. <laughs> Smart is built on sensors. Cognitive is built on trust. This is a subsidiary company. It's multi worth <laughs> billions. Dude, I love Talib Kweli. <laughs> so cool. Did you know that smart is backward looking and cognitive moves us forward? Uh, so smart is bad and cognitive good? You got it. Smart, <laughs> smart gives answers. Cognitive. Asks questions. <laughs> Here, here's the worst one. Smart is hyper-connected. Cognitive is human connection. <laughs> this company is worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> um, the future is cognitive. The future is autonomous. Also, I'd like to add, the future's website is completely impossible to navigate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, that's no election. Swimming to school in the canal, that's human connections. It's all moist young boys, I've got an erection. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them something they don't know about me. That previous applause, applause break cheapened this really good one. <laughs> um, so look, Tautomus is a community, a, a community of visionary catalysts. Uh, and together... <laughs> Oh, awesome! Wait, this, is, this is like the uh, like the website for a polycule. <laughs> <laughs> well, together we're harnessing the power of cognitive technology to build an ecosystem of disruptive, sustainable solutions that touch every aspect of life. We have built an in-customer base with Neom, who is also our largest customer, providing us with a playground to test new ideas and build the world's first truly cognitive city. We will share the human-centric technology we build here with the rest of the world, creating a sustainable, accessible future that revolves around us all. I have spent weeks trying to find one thing that they have built or done. Okay, here's... I feel like... Okay, so I've, I've listened to all this. I've been thinking a lot, and I think my theory is this, right? And he watched Evangelion, and he got the com- and he got the completely wrong. He like just misinterpreted it, and he like doesn't want to build all the cool bits. He just wants to sort of build Tokyo free, but he wants to like turn it into a big hotel. Oh, he thought, and, Gen- I, and I would be with him if he wanted to I build kn- the robot. I know what it is. He thought Gendo Ikari was the hero. <laughs> swim it, swim in the canal, Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> or the boy will have to do it again. <laughs> so. <laughs> what it get in the canal, Shinji? <laughs> what it's really good. <laughs> what it actually the canal's gone berserk. What it actually is is a rebranding of a company that was called Neom Digital and Technology Company, and now it's called Tonimus because it's trying to like do a thing. Uh, the guy in charge of it is an American futurologist and former Cisco executive called yes. Joseph Bradley. Mm. Um, and he Man's said so good they named him twice. And <laughs> And the company was said he was working to integrate AI technology into the line, which will have robots, holograms, and, and run on renewable energy. 
I went on his LinkedIn and read some of the blogs that he's published. And in 2018, this he man does the fucking research. That's incredible, Look at this Riley. Guy. Can, you like ima- can you like imagine like he's logging onto his LinkedIn and he just sees Riley's like? <laughs> this, <laughs> shit, fuck, this man is like put Capone away in three months. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like seeing that notification would be like seeing the witch mark above your door. <laughs> that's, that's the great thing about Riley. He's a man of honor. He lets you know he's coming. I reckon you know? he's like a guy who would like send Riley a message being like, oh, like, uh, I would love to connect. Would you want to meet for coffee sometime? So it's many- like logging into LinkedIn and the swooping bird has viewed your profile. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the message he's endorsed you for bloody head. <laughs> the message that Hussein just said is one we get so often. Be like, hey, you have a technology podcast. You'd love to meet our founder. <laughs> we would, but not for the reasons you think. Um, no, let me, let me share with you the title of a... Does two- he care for oats? A two- <laughs> of a... Hop in a canal. Of a mm. 2018 blog by Joseph Bradley, CEO of Autonomous. <laughs> Question love me oats, love me canal, simple as. <laughs> Number one, you know, another he's thing American. about that that we haven't moved on from. Why did the boy? Why was his highest desire a granola bar? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck. I wish I wa- the oats w- to be solid, mother. <laughs> oh, I, wa- I need to hold the bar of oats as I swim. And why the fuck was he swimming breaststroke, cunt? <laughs> Is he early? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Can I share with you, please, the name of this blog uh, mm. post, which was I've been thinking about sort of ever, ever since we've arrived at the venue and earlier also. (laughs) This is by Joseph, by Joseph Bradley, questioneering a solution to gun violence in America's schools. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I, I, I assume it's like if you build a canal around the school. Well, and the, so when the children are in the canal, <laughs> uh, water actually stops bullets very quickly. So as long as they submerge themselves one meter down, right. and the old men will be throwing their straws into the water for the children to suck air from. <laughs> can I, can so, I just say, uh, it's just a very quick story about how much this podcast has destroyed my ability to interact with normal people. So... One one of my most normal and boring friends from university recently got married, and him and his wife are on honeymoon somewhere, I think, in Texas. And he's been posting pictures in the, like, groomsmen's group chat of, like, them doing boring shit on their honeymoon. But one of them was a video of his wife um, firing an AR-15 at a gun range, and everyone was replying, like, cool. (laughs) And and I replied and went, don't let her into the local school. (laughs) And and there's... (laughs) Tragically, they did. <laughs> Massacre. And then, um, and then, like, three minutes later, the guy's older brother just replied in the chat and went, Milo, that's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> and then, before, before I had even seen that, former host of Trash Future, Charlie Palmer, sent me a screenshot of this interaction in the group chat to my WhatsApp privately and was just like, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, <laughs> I... Uh, earlier today at one of Sydney's many fine cafes, watched and transcribed an entire interview with Mr. Bradley. <laughs> oh, Riley! You've given us so many treats! Mm. I'm just, before you read it, I'm just imagining what it possibly could be. It's like, have you ever seen a mouse go fast? They go fast as fuck. <laughs> Their little cars are so speedy. So, when, so basically, he did an interview with like, Bloomberg Business Week that later turned out to be a sponsored interview, which makes sense because they kept, all the questions were like, but w- how much will, li- will life be better in Neom? <laughs> uh. um, not a single follow-up, just layup after layup. Um, and he said, um, when you think about a city built on machines, it's about one-time transactions, but a cognitive city is about establishing relationships where the city learns from you and allows it to be proactive. And then, basically right. after saying, we're going to spy on the fuck out of you, or we would if this thing was ever possible, uh, the host on, 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 on the show follows up with, but what technologies will transform lives for the better? <laughs> and how straight will it be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look down at the city and its gutters and its whores, and it will, wh- it will scream, save me. And I will whisper, no. And it will say, okay... And then I will say, oh, sorry, I'll save you. Just having a fucking conversation with the city. What are you talking about? It's going to be cognizant and learn oh, from your behavior. And how moist Tom. will these boys be? <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom, I'm very glad you asked because he does sort of give the answer in the next, in the next question. Fantastic. Will they be full of oats and therefore easy to catch? <laughs> <laughs> I need my boy like a thoroughbred horse. <laughs> 
Oh, my boy has broken his leg with a <laughs> with a muscled ass from breaststroke. So we so basically they fill the boys with oats and roast them in the sun, but also in water. So Mohammed bin Salman secretly Scottish, <laughs> yeah. making boy haggis. <laughs> so baggis. They say, imagine a world. So everyone, please imagine a world. Yep, close right. your eyes. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. In which you see your luggage when you pack it, and the next time you see it, it's in the hotel at your destination. Wow. So I, that's just like having a butler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a cognitive city would see that you have an hour and a half in the airport before your flight and guide you on what shopping you might like. It would be like, Riley, go to a Bottega Veneta or whatever. Mm. I don't need a machine to tell me that. <laughs> Or imagine you get home a little early, uh, enabled by all the cognitive technology. You find your wife in bed with another man. <laughs> and you're, but you can think of naught more than the boy. <laughs> and you so brimming with oat. And you can and you can share a moment so of so moist. And you can share a moment of truth with your child. <laughs> you must eat the oats, boy. <laughs> And you shall be a comely lad. <laughs> Get thee to the canal. I didn't know Pierre was here. <laughs> um, ah, yes. <laughs> if you, now, next question. Starting to get bad vibes from the guy hanging out the canal with a big <laughs> butterfly net. <laughs> oh, I intend to catch some very large butterflies today. It's, uh, so. It is bringing back truly an, a breed of pedophile that the British were scared had died out. But the pith helmet... <laughs> <laughs> Again, found you, still fighting the satanic zone wars on a Pacific island. Yeah, they've been really. reintroduced to Neom. <laughs> They're having a wonderful time. <laughs> you may uh, you may ask yourself, what a follow up question could you ask to this? To which this lady said, "But how will your team transform this vision into reality?" Uh, again, uh, could, they won't. <laughs> again, could be a hardball question. <laughs> uh, to which the guys just said, "Everyone in the team is so excited." We've invested a billion dollars asking how you foster ideas and gain entrepreneurship. I transcribed this word for word. Uh, how We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. It's just, we said we'll do it, we're gonna. We invested a billion dollars asking how you foster ideas and gain entrepreneurship at the core to solve problems Wait, we won't- Is XP maxing? Like, what's going on? To solve problems we won't even know exist when this project is completed. <laughs> So you don't understand. We're deep into the Final Fantasy X sphere grid. <laughs> what the? Okay, great. So Where we're going. We won't need eyes to see. <laughs> we're so this is so they then and then he just followed it up with and also this is the first time a digital twin city will be built at the same time as the city. What the fuck wait, are you wait, wait, about? wait, 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 wait. What's going on? A digital twin city. Are they building Neom in, in the what's it? The metaverse. Um, number one, I was hoping you were going to say Minneapolis and St. Paul. And number two, yes, they're building Neom in the metaverse to go with Neom. Oh! <laughs> wait, 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 how, yes. how, one, one, one question, how, how can they do this? How can they do the boys? Yeah, how, well, that's the thing, the right? Mohamed bin Salman doesn't have a problem with people not having legs, all right? <laughs> it's been solved already. <laughs> But okay, the boy, the, how, Mohammed, how Mohammed the boys... bin Salman breaking down and weeping over a bloody suitcase as he's like, I was just trying to make him into a straight line. <laughs> how how would the boys I, how would the boys been swim? So beautiful. How would the boys swim uh, without legs? Well, it feels like a really that's obvious question. Breaststroking, exactly. You don't right. need legs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But still, okay, okay. a very inefficient breaststroke. All right, this, this now makes sense. The okay. question you ask, Hussein, you. does have an answer mm. uh, in my notes. Um, so, with creating a digital, a metaverse neom, they Can say- Can you imagine how much more meticulously rendered the boys are going to be <laughs> in the metaverse <laughs> neom? We have the highest poly count boys in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the boys looking like Overwatch 2 models just ripped <laughs> straight from the game. Yeah, I main boy. Um, <laughs> So they say this is the first time a digital twin city is going to be built at the same time as a city. Yeah. You have a digital representation of the physical world, but they also intersect with one another. Mm. I could be in the digital world experiencing me on my computer, and then 
uh, and then a description and of Riley's afternoon. <laughs> This is yeah. This is this is me like doing Google Maps of like Sydney while in the hotel room. <laughs> and then I will physically show up in Neom as a hologram, which to me no, which to me sounds like a threat. I will show up as a hologram in Neom. Um, you're you're trying to walk to school, and then a hologram blocks the path before you return to the canal, boy. <laughs> what I you know, moisten uh, yourself. <laughs> What I'm immediately hearing is that this is the easiest city in the world to publicly masturbate in. And he says, either well, intentionally or accidentally. Anyway, he says, I will then physically show up in Neom as a hologram. And again, I transcribe this word for word, and we can share either a story or experience. <laughs> yes. I'll have two yes. dialogue trees so when you, I so appear. So you would, you would like sort of show up like a ghost of Christmas past or something like that. We've disrupted. Oh, Muhammad, I am Jamal <laughs> Khashoggi. <laughs> Dragging a suitcase behind him. Moonwalking, yes. This is how I left the Saudi embassy, according to the surveillance footage. Yeah. You killed me right after I did my favorite move. <laughs> and then you could think about creating a digital twin. So in the real world, again, I have to emphasize, transcribed word for word. <laughs> Neom's an exercise in like, you know, the questions like, what would you like, would you make out with yourself? And like, would you get hard if you saw yourself? So that's, that's what Neom actually really is. <laughs> so in the real world, there's only one of you. In the digital world, Wait, you- Wait, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> in, the dig in the digital world you can jack yourself off in, in, in the digital world you've got a best friend um, in the digital world you could have multiple personas interacting with different people you could have one persona where you're teaching kids a persona where you're enjoying friend time or even one where you're playing sports so basically it's like yeah there's one of you but you could just copy yourself in the metaverse then have that copy of you go do stuff like teach kids or have friend time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to have any fun. <laughs> yeah, you Double can... you can have the fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, be at home thinking of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're going slightly over time. I'm so sorry we're going slightly over time. Um but I have <laughs> much like preparations for the building of Neom. The, <laughs> there have been setbacks in the schedule here. I do have a couple more things which is that um, Dubai is trying not to be left behind and is also building its own metaverse version of itself. Yes! Yes. Um, so Dubai is opening the world's first metaverse nightclub in a hotel. Um, right. It's called Vision. Uh, mm -hmm. And club goers and crypto owners will be able to, and like, I'm sh I am certain that this was, that this is a press release of one, two, three, four words. Um, and this is all that, and ever, people have been trying to spin stories about this place out of these four words. Quote, turn coins into cocktails, which you've never it's been able to do at another bar. bar. Yeah. We don't take coins. Um, well, NFTs will be available to purchase at the bar. Yes. <laughs> Round of NFTs. Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Three, four, six. I'll have an ape if you're having an ape, yeah. Or do uh, you want can to I split have an half ape? an ape? Can I have like a macaque monkey? Okay. I'll go on. I'll be naughty. Give yeah. me an ape. All right. I'll have a chip. A, a bartender giving like a woman a picture of like an NFT ape and being like, that guy gets sent that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Compliment to the, the gentleman across the bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my girlfriend and I saw you from across the bar and we loved your ape. Uh, Guys, I think somebody spiked my ape. <laughs> Oh, so he's acting real strange. <laughs> he's muttering things beyond our mortal ken. Trying to, trying to smash my ape on the side of the bar because I get in a fight and stab him. <laughs> so it's got to be a sharp bit on this ape. <laughs> Sorry. So b back to Neom. Uh, they've also created a so the metaverse. <laughs> the metaverse zone is being called XVRS, um, and it's quote the first metaverse that's actually a metaverse according to Bradley, in that uh -huh. it will. Bring together the digital and physical worlds, oh. allowing a virtual visitor from the U.S. to experience a hike through the mountainous areas of Neom, all without leaving their armchair. Or an artist could post an NFT in a virtual space, which could also appear on the wall of any physical apartment. It's a strand-type game where you can do... 
Counter-Strike sprays onto people's walls. And just have like a big titty anime lady show up just on <laughs> a 40-year-old man who moved there over, over for the promise of boys. <laughs> this woman looks like she's had no oats at all. <laughs> oh, dear. Bradley went on to say, it's not really about mega cities anymore. It's about meta cities, to which I, it leads me to believe, I don't think this man's ever said a normal sentence. You know, it's like, I'm not just going to br- have breakfast. I'm going to break my fast. Yeah. That's so right. he says, imagine he, you have it. Please go ahead. He, I was just, it just sounds like, it, I know you're saying words, but it sounds like simlish to me. <laughs> this is all. Oh, no, this is fully AI generated. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. this is not Scorpo a human being. Scorpo Ronda Ram, Grindle Dosh. <laughs> Riley. Okay. Riley was transcribing this from the little symbols that were popping up over his head. <laughs> This guy really likes dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and soccer ball. <laughs> Ghost spider marriage. <laughs> mm. So imagine you own an apartment in Neom. Okay. Mm, sure. Everyone imagine that, please. Okay. And you decide. Oh, I imagine the wrongest thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, the birds, they won't stop dying. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they opened the the boy levy has burst. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine like, many hath drowned in the lower quarter. You imagine just a bunch of beavers getting into Neom and making their dams out of boys, <laughs> patting it down the with their flat tails. The rancid putrid dams of rotting boy. <laughs> <laughs> the paste of oats holding them together like a mortar. <laughs> <laughs> a castle of Neom's finest boys. <laughs> uh, so imagine you own an apartment in Neom. None of that stuff, a normal one. And you decide you're going to open up and have a party. You can have folks decide to come in virtually, holographically. <laughs> imagine cool. holographically attending a party. Uh. <laughs> So they I'm also tired say tired from this. That thing is, it's, it's, this it's, 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 it's that meme where it's like they don't know I'm here holographically. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> we do. You don't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know I'm full of votes. Uh, <laughs> one of the most unique features of Xverse is that it will offer a virtual representation of all of Neom in real time. Meaning, uh-huh. like, if your boy, if your boy's swimming, you know where your boy is. <laughs> And also everyone else does as well. Wow, um, that's awesome. You can look at any boy in the city. <laughs> no matter how wet or dry they are. That's freaking cool. Boy tracker. Well, <laughs> don't worry. Oh, looks like he went into the change room. Don't worry about it, man. I said everywhere. <laughs> um, could offer a virtual representation of Neom to help inform its construction with real bricks and mortar. Again, not a brick or mortar will be involved in this. Man, I hope Salmon is a fucking TikTok girl. He just wants to, like, astral project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Think of it, it, the article says, like a crowdsourcing the design of an entire city. Virtual visitors could, for example, customize the color schemes of virtual apartments, which could then be replicated as the interiors of real buildings. Or if enough people buy NFTs of apartments in a virtual building, the decision could be made to build it for real. To which I said, wait, I thought it was being built as two buildings that were big line. Why are there new buildings? (laughs) Now, Totemus... Uh, is aware that this will require an enormous amount of personal data collection, or as some say, spying. <laughs> and so they're de- announcing the development of a, co- of a data collection consent management platform called Mthreld, or it's meld, but the E's a three. Uh, I'm, I'm Mthreld to hear it. <laughs> Mthreld will allow users to take control of their personal data and even earn money from Neom for sharing it. Mithrel me more. <laughs> uh, to which, uh, and then when asked, what if someone doesn't want to do that? Bradley said, maybe they're not ready for Neon. <laughs> this is the la- they shall not have their oats. This is the last example I'm going to share before we shuffle off this stage. Um, which is, when asked why... have to why, shuffle off something else, dude. Which is, which is, when Bradley was asked, why would anyone want to do that? This was in a less 
uh, softball interview, he said, well, by sharing their location, health, and movement data, for example, mm -hmm. if a Neom user uh, is immobile for too long, a drone will be deployed to check on them. <laughs> oh, fuck. 911, my boy is stationary. <laughs> Don't worry. I fear he has drowned in the canal. He sits in the briny depths. <laughs> The beavers hath taken him, I fear. No, father, I was contemplating. <laughs> contemplating, father. I saw I was, two boys in the desert. <laughs> I was so filled with oats, I was forced to stop. <laughs> Please do not strike me down with a hellfire missile for standing still. Look, I am aware we've gone over time. Thank you for being patient with us. That was the Neom update. <laughs> 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 Great club in Sydney. I want to thank you for coming out on a Thursday. Tom and Demi, the hosts of BigSoftTitty.png, Sydneyites, and both wonderful comedians and people in their own right. I want to thank you for uh, allowing us to do psychic damage to you today. Oh, oh my God. I feel I, I feel exhausted. <laughs> it's really taken it out of me. Yeah, thank you so much for somehow watching that interview. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, that makes me think, like, it's such psychic strength that I think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> it's called neurodivergence. And, <laughs> <laughs> and hey, the only room where you can get that loud of a shit <laughs> for autism. We need to get you all home nice and safe. <laughs> I like the trains too. <laughs> <laughs> and some people started a chant of legs. Can we please walk off to a chant of legs, 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 legs. legs, 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 legs.